people are working on pressuring Papua New Guinea government. Now people are put him, give him deadline. Long Prime Minister, he must take him action. Now this plan deadline, I mean, up until 1st of October. To do everything possible to uh, secure release of those captured and to do everything within our power to take those who are injured so their lives can be saved. Good evening, everyone. This is a special news and current affairs edition focused on the latest developments on the eight-year-old Bougainville conflict. Tomorrow is the last day of September, the final day, in which Sam Kawona expects an answer from the Prime Minister on his demand for the withdrawal of security forces on Bougainville and to declare the island independent. Failing that, Kawona threatened to kill the five soldiers captured early this month at Kangu, and he made it clear in an interview with us he'd kill one each day in order of rank. These are extreme agendas. The government was not expected to give in. The initial reaction from the commander of the Papua New Guinea Defence Force, Brigadier General Jerry Singerok, was to appeal to Kawona to spare the lives of the five soldiers. To kill them would be an act of murder. Bougainville's regional member of parliament, John Momus, has reminded Kawona that it would be against Christian principles and common sense to hold lives of humans as a bargaining point. Mr. Momus has been asked by the commander of the Defence Force to try and ensure the release of the soldiers. I'm very happy because I've always wanted to be involved in uh, talking with the rebels, with talking with uh, the soldiers, the chiefs, that you know, everybody, all the parties involved. Uh, and I think it's a good sign that um, that this situation has arisen in lately. And uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I've, I've already spoken with the, uh, the commanders of the Papua New Guinea Defence Force to lend my support uh, in the uh, a peaceful uh, search for peaceful resolution of the crisis. And um, John Momus flew to Booker early in the week to talk to the BRA command. Leaders, the Defence Force, the churches, ordinary Papua New Guineans and even Bougainvillians are hopeful that Kawona does not carry out the threat. Sam Kawona and well armed members of the Bougainville Revolutionary Army came out to the Koromira area, the east coast towards the south of the mainland of Bougainville last week. These are rare pictures of the coastline from Kieta south. That used to be the Aroba Airport, once an international airport and the main air link into Bougainville from the rest of Papua New Guinea. On this day, the body of the late Catholic Bishop of Bougainville, Gregory Sinkai, was flown to Koromira, his home area. This is where he emerged as a clergyman. The church where he said mess to a predominantly Catholic population was to be his final funeral service before burial in Kieta. Unlike the funeral services in Buka and Arawa, there were no soldiers at Koromira. This is the BRA stronghold. There was clearly a strong display of force, a strong purpose on the part of the BRA corps. That demonstration was only distracted by the atmosphere of sadness at the loss of one of them, the Bishop of Bougainville. Yeah. 
Sam Kaona was also with his wife and his seven-year-old daughter. His daughter, in this case, was brought out of the bush for the first time and saw the sea for the first time. Sam Kaona felt the loss of Bishop Sinkai as the others. They had lost someone who gave them spiritual strength. Spiritual? Yes. And I say walk in pastoral walk long in inside long old village and about because long this blood time no good in no got missing stations. Um, because long fight war between Papua New Guinea and we operate long village level. Uh, long side long peace. I miss I advise in me pla, I miss I talk talk long me pla. Me especially, uh, me no sabi long old narapla. Leaders long side long me pla, that's all me. Yes, uh, me sabi plenty time, me sabi come long em. Uh, time me sabi feel him all kind kind heavy workloads. Na em now, I miss I talk talk long me long side long peace too. Now long this pla, plenty is a uh, Tinti Narakain, all this I think also, and I support him, side long independence. Uh, but suppose me play scale him good, this plan man, and me no, and me no support him one plus I as well. And me quiet uh, type of a person, na and I have a star PC, scale him good, one him, Tinti Blong all people, like Blong all people, na in his capacity. Em now, em is have a time long bring him peace. After eight years since the conflict started, there hasn't been any peace. There's been ceasefires, suspicions, failed peace talks, accusations and counter accusations, sufferings and more killings. Both the Papua New Guinea government and the BRA are talking peace, but their idea of peace contrasts dramatically with each other. The government, the legitimate authority of the independent state of Papua New Guinea, of which Bougainville is a part of, wants to basically end the fight, restore services, reconstruct Bougainville. The current theme is restore, reconstruct, and reconcile. Here then is the BRA's position on peace. And peace and only after. Uh, you me or Bogan billions, you me yet, you me, you me sit down one time, na you me address him this pla issue, one em, one em something em is up long, hard blow me pla. Only after me pla ad address him this pla issue of independence, then real peace and by come long this pla time. All other areas, areas all same long, practical areas. Em display and by come behind. After me play, decide him. Also, future blow me play. Now, future blow me play and freedom. Now, freedom and display peace. Me play, I will like him. Me play, you know, uh, prepare long, narapla kind, uh, narapla kind option other than independence. Maski and me heart, there is no point of. Uh, Turn him back. Maski and me heart, by me pla push on. By me pla go ahead. Because me pla feel him long heart blow me pla. Uh, there is no compromise. You know got compromise. Plenty people blow me pla. Children of Bogan Bill only die finish long this pla struggle. Now there is no other alternative. The only way uh, for us left is for, for us to fight through, fight on. Even if it means 10 to 20 years, even talking Prime Minister, say Julius Chen, finish long on here, time me, I check him this plan, a peace talk, in which me to plan make him long 1984. Me talking him long, I belong in, me talk, because you know, walk long, hurry me plan, for the next 10 to 20 years, by me plan struggle on. Now, in history, me plan is have, one of country or one of them group is have a struggle long, rights, freedom long all, in the end, all is I achieve a manum goal. With that principle, I'm now, me plan by struggle on, fight on, until the final goal has, has been achieved. That hard line has not changed, even though 
there's been at least four separate peace meetings between different governments and the BRA. The first one, now known as the Endeavour Accord, was facilitated by New Zealand. It was held on board HMS Endeavour. The government team was led by the first Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea and now Governor of East Civic, Sir Michael Samare. Among those on the other side was former North Solomon's Premier, Joseph Kabui. There was no Sam Kawana, there was no Francis Ona, the president of the political head of the rebels. All that was under Sir Rabbi Namaliu as Prime Minister. The one point that invariably creeps into conversations on the conflict, was it a mistake to pull out the security forces on Bourneville in 1989? It certainly gave the BRA a strong position, a strong position morally, a strong position operationally and politically. A change of government after the 92 elections brought in Pius Winty as Prime Minister. He gave Bougainville the attention demanded by making Michael Ogio the Minister for Bougainville. Mr. Winty then made a terrible prediction that the Panguna copper mine would come under the government control within months and Bougainville not long after. Sir Julius, who was then Pius Winty's deputy, said at that time the head of the country had made a prediction and he encouraged the rest of the country to get behind him and make it work. Sir Julius indeed got behind the Bougainville problems himself when he took over from Pius Winty as Prime Minister. In a series of these events, how far and deep this government is prepared to go to find solutions to this problem. We have the Endeavour Accord, we have the first ceasefire, we surrender of arms, amnesty, the Mulligan Accord, Honiara Declaration, and in some of those talks we have invited uh, international observers, and I say it just for the sake of uh, uh, recapturing the, uh, the names of those people and the people who attended, Secretary, Deputy Secretary General, of the Commonwealth came into Cairns and participated. We invited the parliamentary delegation of Australia to visit Papua New Guinea. We had Sir John Caputin's uh, report on Bougainville. We had uh, also uh, Mr. Vandrels of the United Nations attended. So we invited everybody to the ceasefire uh, in October 1994. We have never left any stone unturned. It's a week since the ceasefire was declared on Bougainville, a bid by the Prime Minister Sir Julius Chan and the commander of the Bougainville Revolutionary Army, Sam Kaona, to bring about a peaceful settlement to the six-year-old conflict on Bougainville. The ceasefire was one of the steps the two leaders agreed to when they met at the beginning of the month. They signed a peace agreement in which they also approved the deployment of a Pacific peacekeeping force on the island. Seven days after they take up their positions, another meeting is to take place. It's hoped other leaders of the BRA and the interim government of Bougainville will attend. Today, after the signing ceremony, I begin on a new <coughs> initiative with the personal commitment from Sam Kauna and his colleagues and with my personal commitment as Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea to set uh, the state now, so that from here on, every step we take is a solid <clears throat> opening for another step forward towards peace. I believe, uh, and I'm confident, that uh, peace will come about because that's wha what people uh, people want, uh, both from uh, Bougainville and Papua New Guinea. So I'm confident uh, when I go back. When I instruct them, I tell them uh, what to do, uh, people will uh, follow. We all walk away from this conference room. We have no losers. We are all winners. This is peace with honor. And everybody who participated here 
can walk out of here with your heads up. We've all won. But more than that, the people of Bolingbroke and the Solomons have won. We've brought a beginning to a new hope so that once again our people can move around hoping that they can convert their dreams into reality. For that to happen, it depends on the two of us. Son. So before all of you, just like Sam, I'm committing myself and my government to peace. And I extend to you that hand of friendship, a hand of cooperation. Let's move forward together. That handshake then ensured the Arawa Peace Conference and the deployment of the Pacific Peacekeeping Force to monitor the ceasefire. Sir Julius met all the agreed conditions for the Arawa Conference. It was a time of high expectations. In a subsequent address to the nation, the Prime Minister, given the signals in Honiara by Kawona, was full of optimism that there may be light at the end of the tunnel. After six years of tragedy, an agreement for a path towards a lasting peace has been reached. There is no turning back. We are talking directly with each other, and the dialogue is continuing. I have spent many long hours with Mr. Kaona. The talks were difficult, the negotiations tough and prolonged. But I discovered many things in the course of those talks. I discovered that Mr. Kaona, just like any one of us, is a man of reason, integrity and compassion. He is a man that can be respected, a man of peace, and one who will live up to his word. For the last 12 months, I have never stopped. I fulfill, and I'm able to tell you, I fulfill every chapter of that agreement, every condition. The questions of re refuge, forgiveness, amnesty, it's done. Setting up a transitional government, done. Bringing a place for Arab Peace Conference, done. And I'm still moving, you know, so uh, I've looked at every avenue that is constitutionally possible to do so uh, without inflicting uh, too much on the, uh, the rest of the country. I've taken that path. may have considered the Arawa Peace Conference high, but not urgent enough. He took a path leading back into the jungle and did not come out for the conference. Nor did Francis Ona. Instead, one might call spokesmen of the BRA were sent with rehearsed scripts. Whatever resolution to be passed, in this peace conference must not jeopardize or undermine a proper political decision to be discussed at the future conference. This current conference must address total withdrawal of PNG BF. Another BRA spokesman, Lawrence Isidore, told the conference the whole peace arrangement in Arawa was a plot against the BRA. Tupla Ona, one time cowboy, and the same BRA commanders, the interim government members, all in Naplo died long here. This plot, I mean, true, and no can deny him. As Bogan Villains, no can deny him. Now you walk towards Long Street in this plot, secret plot. Today, straight in this plot, rouse him, straight in Naplo, find him Naplo Dupla Road, one by Tupla Ona, and a cowboy must come down long here. Plant your agenda, I mean, stop long paper. I mean, no na proceed, I mean, no na long successful. I mean, no na long carrying kai kai or something, you probably like him. No, no, no. 
The peace conference then became an avenue to pull ideas, but it failed to strike the desired results. The ceasefire was still in force, although there were allegations and counter-allegations from the two sides of breaking the provisions of the ceasefire agreement. During our meeting with the BRA commander, Sam Kawana said the security forces and his men are at war since the lifting of the ceasefire early this year. And me work long operate and I need long all that blown uh, Prime Minister blown Papua New Guinea. Uh, this plot order and this plot order and me make him time and me uh, rouse him ceasefire uh, of 1994. Now and me talk also, me no got more time long in entertain him any more talk talk one time uh, Bougainville interim government or BRA. Now even he went ahead. Now make him statement, uh, make him statement also, your darkest hour has come. And now, all get a walk BRA and we walk long walk him, and we walk long walk him underneath, underneath long this plan, declaration of war on Bougainville by the Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea. Me not been surprised as BIA, BRA general, time this plan operation he come up, because all kind kind of operations, and even come up after Prime Minister and declare him once again all out war on Bougainville. Suppose me not recall him, first one him, uh, Operation Long Coromira, this place station here, in which BRA and me, and me win him, and me win him, now push him out, drive him out, one plus platoon, Papua New Guinea Defense Force, only show him this place all water across from here, from the beach across to the island about uh, five to six kilometers out. Narapla, second op operation, and even come up long Orami. Orami once again, and victory, and even go, go long side long BRA. Narapla operation, even come up, and this pla high speed operation. Yes, me pla been kissing all together, um, threatening, uh, threatening media release from Papua New Guinea Defense Force. Now, me pla you walk long waiting more long Aropa Airport. Time only come, one full battalion. Only come, me play, drive him out, drive him all out. BRA and me uh, win him victory. Long this play time, one week. In seven days, and me drive him out army. Now after that, after that incident, uh, and me even come, next following incident, and me come up Long Kango Beach. Now Long Kango Beach, me play survey yet, such operations, by come up. Now and me legitimate because this black in operation and me legitimate because Prime Minister yet and me declare him this plan war now and walk long ask him more soldiers he must die. The Kangu confrontation will be remembered in history over Bougainville. Thirteen soldiers lost their lives. What precisely happened is not known to this point. An internal investigation has been ordered by the Papua New Guinea Defence Force. The force has referred to the killings as massacre. Sam Kaona describes it differently. Now, massacre em, em me apply long civilians here. One of something come up long uh, Kangu, Kangu Beach, em operation, purely military action. Purely to plow warring parties, warring uh, armies, only walk long fight. Therefore, uh, long this plan, Sunday, uh, BRA em in up long win him. Completely, completely destroying this black camp, Long Kanko Beach, now overrun him. Uh, this black I emi mean, I mean, no massacre, I emi mean, purely uh, military operation. Five soldiers were taken captive in that operation. Kawona has threatened to kill them if the government does not respond to a set of demands. Two platas all. First one, I'm long withdrawing security force. Uh, from in, from Bougainville Island and the atolls. Number two, uh, Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea government, I mean, I must recognize him now, independence from Bougainville. Two platas all, me pla put him. Now, yesterday, uh, me pla been sit down, me pla been sit down, uh, come up one time, decision. This pla decision, I'm all same. Me pla walk long, give him all, till the end of this month. 
after me pla harim lo radio reply blo this pla demand blo me pla uh Julius Chen and me walk long sign up and tap long and me no worry. I think uh I think Prime Minister and walk long thing also me pla walk long pilai marble game ya or me pla pilai cash cash. Na me being walk long and me talk also me no na bow down long when I'm kind demand only walk long give. Therefore yesterday me pla sit down na uh all communications uh officers blow me pla only Salim Pinis, Mese Chikolong, uh, Prime Minister, through, through CEO, CEO, CEO of uh, One PIR, this plan demand now, me plan work long pressure in Papua New Guinea government, now me plan put him, give him deadline, long Prime Minister, he must take him action. Now this plan deadline, me up until 1st of October, end of this month, me plan must give him some plan, Positive, positive rep, uh, rep, reply, don't demand, blow me plan. Suppose me plan, you know, kiss him, okay, first September, one plan long all this plan, uh, captured prisoner of war, by me plan, neck him. One plan by date, long this plan, uh, this plan date. Suppose Prime Minister, you know, uh, meet him this plan, demand, blow me plan, long show him Prime Minister also, me plan, you know, pilai cash cash. First two prisoners, me plan, holy mall, okay, me plan, Lucy Mall free. Me play Mary Mary Long All, sorry, sorry Long All, na me play Lucy Moore Go Free. This time, this time around, you know God. Suppose Prime Minister and me walk long hard long me play, okay. Me play, you know, be like marble. Me play much hard on him too. So, first October, one play private by out. Following that, another play private until. Suppose Prime Minister you know Harim Tok Tok blow me pla. Finally, behind him rank and file, more senior by day. Uh, by day. After, me pla out him ticket long first or pri private or Apple him. It's a serious threat and sharply contradicts his earlier announcement that the five soldiers are being treated according to provisions of the Geneva Convention on Prisoners of War. Am you all right? Because uh, Papua New Guinea, I'm all broke him. I'm all kill him, civilians. Bougainville civilians, only walk on stop inside long. Uh, Port Mosby, lay Papua New Guinea. Okay, harmless civilians. I'm all on kill him all. One talk system, I'm all on operate. Inside long, Bougainville. Okay, suppose you look him, civilians. Human rights violation, only walk on commit him long Bougainville. M this pla kind pass in Oliver Clon making me pla. Na me pla by sit down all sem tas all. Na let him papua new guinea kill him all. Uh, civilians blow me pla. M now, suppose me making me pla all sem, okay, papua new guinea yet, and me walk on start him. Long this pla wait as all, let me justify. BRA, I must make him this pla. I must take him tough stand, I must show him papua new guinea. Because me pla no, me pla fed up one time. This pla kind pass in papua new guinea, I make him no me pla. Killing more innocent civilians in about inside law must be lay. Government authorities maintain that same Kawana has misconstrued reported harassment of Bougainvilleans by other members of the public. The term harassment has even been raised on the floor of parliament by a number of Bougainville MPs. In a most radical case yet, since the reported harassments, the Solomon Islands government this week recalled its students in tertiary institutions here. The official reason for the action is spillover effects of Bougainville. Waigani, however, expressed disappointment at not being informed. But the same Waigani has not said much about Bougainvillean students who are reportedly harassed at tertiary institutions. Those at the Goroka campus of the University of Papua New Guinea flew on to Port Mosby yesterday on their way to Buka. There was a, 
a, a member of the, the community itself that was killed over at uh, uh, Congo Beach, and we, we had to be the victims out of uh, out of that. Uh, though we were sure that there was nothing would nothing would happen, but we we had actually threats. There's a few of our students that were actually chased out of the township itself, and. You know. Well, basically, it's probably because of the skin color. We are all black, and uh, you know the, the difficulty is that people aren't able to identify who is from Buka, who is from Kieta, who is from Buin. So we become a victim. As long as we are black in color, we are the victims of the but crisis. Some Western Britons that look like Bukas too, don't well, they? Well, believe it or not, one or two New Islander students they were chased, and you know, as long as somebody is black. They become a victim out of a crisis. So. That's bad, isn't it? It is. It is. And, you know, I, I sympathize for the whole situation itself. You know, what else can we do? This very concern was expressed by Bougainvillian MPs on the floor of Parliament last week. South Bougainville MP Michael Limo was disgusted that the government had no plans to ensure the safety of students and that they now have to disrupt their studies. Even uh, I, I raised a question on the floor of parliament uh, um, uh, yesterday, question the minister if the minister is aware on the, the plan uh, for uh, uh, various institutions uh, have a plan to, to evacuate Bougainvillean students uh, uh, attending uh, education institutions in other part of Papua New Guinea. And he, uh, surprisingly, he, uh, he denied that. So this sort of um, uh, attitude or this sort of um, um, way, uh, you know, certain ministers, because the education, I think the Minister for Education is in charge of um, uh, the responsibility of uh, education, and I think through his ministry, he could have approached the rightful authorities like police uh, to have enough uh, uh, security be provided uh, to those um, uh, educational institutions in Papua New Guinea to avoid any, any um, such um, uh, unnecessary arrestment uh, to Bogen within a uh, 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 student. The national parliament was poorly informed, if anything, on the latest situation. With the prime minister on duties overseas last week, the acting could not answer questions on Bougainville, particularly on the question of a bipartisan approach to solving the crisis and the ultimatum from Sam Kawana. If Chris Haiveta couldn't, no one could. It demonstrated that Sir Julius was handling the Bougainville conflict himself. The only Bougainville MP in cabinet, Joseph Engilio, is undoubtedly a concerned man, frustrated. During the parliament session this week, the government has not come out openly, openly to really appeal, just to appeal and ask the Papua New Guineans, our Papua New Guineans, to just to take more, you know, concern that no one touches the the Bougainvilleans, uh, and just to come out in the public on TV or on the news, just for an appeal not to touch or arrest our Bougainvilleans, is would be a a sign that uh, the government or the deputy or any other minister is of concern. This, this week we were very, very concerned of uh, the three Bogolmin MPs who were here. And uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking from my heart and I was really concerned, so as the member for South Bogolmin, and so as Michael Ogio, the member for North. And uh, just to see that government, a minister or the acting prime minister has not come out and appear on the, on the TV would have been good enough for us. All the four members of parliament from Bougainville plan to take their concerns to the prime minister when he arrives on Monday. In the meantime, Minister Egilio made this plea to the rest of Papua New Guinea on the harassments against Bougainvilleans. You may look at the Papua New Guinea man or good plan man. Nah, time situation is all the same. You know, so too much calabro, you mean, that we are of concern of the other, to the other. Uh, me appeal to solo you, me or get a. No, Larry, me play stop. 
plani lom ni plai ron no elom pelens lo situation plani or bogon villians is tap we through a long country you me orgeta we have lost a brother a sister a mama or papa and you me orgeta lo two plus side one time you know we have lost uh, i want to remind the as the Papua New Guineans, that there are a lot of our mainland Papua New Guineans in Vogelville, well taken care of by our Vogelvillians. And that is a concern of, you know, whether Papua New Guineans is, is our, are aware of it, we like reveal them that they are planting or land blooming from mainland, Morobians, Sipics, Medangs, Highlanders, they are out on the island well taken care of by our own people. So, you know, this is a reality, you know. You know, plenty of land you missed up, or Bogor Millions still caught him all on our side. So, me like, you know, main line is silent on this line. You may even stop long time no good. Life now we hard to mind. Oh, Papa, oh, my. But as the hours tick away, Sam Kawana's ultimatum still stands. The commander of the Papua New Guinea Defence Force, Jerry Singerok, appealed to Kawana to spare the lives of the captured soldiers. To kill them would be an act of murder. The commander of the PNTDF and BRA, incidentally, know each other very well. Kawana, a former soldier, was once in a group with Singerok as his supervisor. Today they are at opposite ends and concern for the safety of the soldiers, Brigadier General Singerok has asked Bougainville MPs to help secure the release of the soldiers. Uh, my position has always been non-violent. I don't believe in violence. And um, it's unfortunate that uh, so many lives uh, are being lost and um, maybe people are now coming to realize that uh, uh, the military option is not a, uh, a solution and also opting for the peaceful uh, approach is not a sign of uh, defeat in fact courageous leaders uh, reject violence and opt for the peaceful approach which is the approach of uh, the mothers, the approach of uh, people who care for, for you know, one another. John Momus met with Chris Haiveta, then acting Prime Minister, and sought the assistance of field commanders to go to Buin to meet with the BRA leadership. Anxiety over the safety of the soldiers grew each day in the last week the member for Bougainville pleaded with the BRA to spare their lives. He reminded Kaona that killing them would be against all Christian principles. And that was also made known by the Apostolic Nuncio, the Pope's representative in Papua New Guinea during the funeral service of the late Bishop Gregory Sinkai of Bougainville. The life of a man or a woman belong to no one but God. Most of the population of Bougainville is Christian. It means that most of the people believe in Jesus Christ and has committed to follow his doctrine and his example. It is time to translate our faith into action. It is time to build up, once again, mutual confidence, to trust each other and for both sides to show concrete gestures of goodwill. Allow me to mention here that one of these gestures could be to free the prisoners recently taken by the BRA. 
May the death of Bishop Gregory be an occasion for all parties in the Bougainville conflict to end the violence and come to a just agreement so that the people can once more live in peace and happiness. I am sure that this is what Bishop Gregory would want. Enough people on both sides of the conflict have suffered. Enough property has been destroyed. Too many lives have been lost. Please do not prolong for one more day the agony of Bougainville. In all the prayers, pleas and hopes, no one would be living the thoughts of the five soldiers than this man, Sergeant Petuelli. The sergeant was also in BRA captivity for several months this year. He endured the same threats. I'm all giving two weeks to me deadline. So they said, I'm main something that's all like him, and security force must move out. Main call blower. Main call blower must move out. So security force must move out. Now you see me, I'm Mrs. Bermitulo, must talk talk now. I'm saying, push him government there. Push him government, the government too must walk him some place, you know. Moving security, we bring security force out. Time we've been talking, I'm saying, me no been for it. Me no been for it, like I said, by your killing of one. Me say, I said, me say, I'm a humble lord. So me thinking that's all I'm saying. Whether to me, he die, he's your right, or you know, die, he's your right. Two, one time, he's a master, so either one of them, something, he's come first, and that's me accepting that's all. Suppose all the child, he's come back, he's your right, or kill me, he's your right. Sergeant Petuelli escaped in July with the assistance of a Bougainvillian who he got to know during his months of captivity. Sergeant Petuelli expressed concern over one aspect of the struggle. He felt the BRA had an upper hand in their ability to take weapons and ammunition from the security forces. Sam Kawona, in fact, boasted about this. His line, the government of PNG supplies them with the arms and the ammo. Lately, me plow Oklong got major victories. This play, me plow been starting one time operation long here, long Koromira. Big plow operation come up long here. Uh, at that time, it was a company headquarter. This play, me company headquarter. Now inside long this play, me play, me plow been uh, winning plenty through ammunition. On top long this play, motor, bombs too. Boxes and boxes, me plow win him. Now, weapons or explosives to one time, claymore mines and all that. From this pla operation now, em now, me play, me nap talk also, me play, uh, nap operate, even long five years. The way me plus I use him ammunition, blow me plow all this pla, by taking me plus something also five to six or even seven years. Now, with the latest. Operations long Kangu, uh, me plow been win, winning plenty ammunition and tap long this plow. And tap long this plow, okay, one plow motor, motor tube too, me plow winning. Now bombs blow motor and me plow winning long here. Therefore, now me plow equipped militarily. So if Papua New Guinea wants to uh, continue on with the fight, okay, and me walk long equipping me plow. You know, me plow go out, spend him toya long by more all weapons, or weaponry, blow me plan, no guy. And Papua New Guinea Defense Force yet, you walk long giving me plan. Papua New Guinea government yet, you walk long giving me plan. Share long this plan. All uh, military weaponry and you walk long importing from outside. So one time this plan, me got confidence, BRA by winning more fight. BRA. More fighting is not the position of the government. A peaceful settlement is on top of the agenda for many leaders, provincial, national, and even those at the international level. Of all the political authorities this side, the one that is more abreast of the situation on the ground is the Bougainville Transitional Government of Premier Theodore Miriam. Mr. Miriam has always held that dialogue must be continued. The one point that the Premier may differ from others is that the BRA must realize 
that the PNG government has a responsibility over Bougainville and its people. At the same time, the government must consider the human aspect of the BRA cause as much as possible, Mr. Miriong says, his government has tried to facilitate that. And that's how, that, that is what BGG, Bougalville Transitional Government, tries to do. And Bougalville Transitional Government is, uh, is an open book in, in, in so far as everything we plan to do, everything we think that can be done, in order to creatively solve this crisis, this destructive crisis, we have documented and given to the national government. And the dialogue bit, we also try to do that quite openly. And, uh, but the problem is there is so much suspicion of us by the Defence Force and by perhaps even the Prime Minister. We are in constant dialogue with the national government. We are part of the national government, the Bougainville Transitional Government. And the, the problem is, in the course of the dialogue, what we tell them, they don't take it as the truth. I think that's, that's the problem. And the other aspect is that they should also re-establish the dialogue with the rebel leaders. But the Premier says that with the knowledge that his there. movements had been the restricted the after the Kangu killings. The... There were even allegations that he had known about Kangu before it happened. At the moment I am not restricted as far as I understand. I was, my movement was restricted on the basis that uh, I was advised that it was being restricted for my own safety. My, it has been my, my, uh, my rule of operation and my rule of existence that whenever there is something being done, I must try to understand. I must understand. I try to understand the BRA and the leaders. I try to understand the national government. I quite understand what my people want. It is no secret, and that's the thing that is a lot of suspicion. People at heart want independence. But my view is that that is what people want. But it is the duty of leaders to try and see if that is good for the people without suppressing it, but let it be discussed. So that, not for the benefit of maybe the leaders, but for the benefit of those who, who think that something can, some miracle can happen just by using those words, or even by demanding that. That has to be talked about so that everybody can understand. And maybe that's, that, that's too ideal of, of me to, to, to say that. But I think it's, talk about it, understand, and find a solution. On a different front, on the ground, there's been noticeable changes to the physical outlook of Arawa. This is how it was during the Arawa Peace Conference. As you can see around here, the place is overgrown and uh, it will take a lot of work to, to get this place back in order. Uh, basically, uh, what the peace conference, uh, uh, if the result of the peace conference is positive and uh, everybody is uh, willing to start working again, uh, we will take this place back in, in, uh, in the states where it was uh, uh, 
six years back. A large section of the town area has been cleared of trees and undergrowth. The people at the care centers volunteered their services to clear the place and make way for delegates to the Bougainville Peace Conference to use the houses. There were very little of furniture and electrical appliances in the houses. Luthers had cleared the lot. At other sections of Arawa, houses were still upright, but under heavy foliage and undergrowth and trees. Two community schools in Arawa town have been overtaken by a bush. Outside one classroom, the school books left to the mercy of Mother Nature. On the floor of one classroom, school books were no longer usable, but the building seemed to be in fair condition. The only people left in Arawa after the Bougainville Peace Conference are the people at the care centers. Two years later, it's quite a different story, a different picture. Arawa is now the pinhead of government services in central Bougainville, catering for about 30,000 people. Under the program of reconstruction and reconciliation, services are being expanded to neutral zones and hopefully to the BRA stronghold where about 20,000 people live. Peter Siunai is the district coordinator of central Bougainville. So our biggest aim at the moment is to provide the basic services to these areas. First, within the government control area, then to the peace, declared peace zone area. The declared peace zone area is within the North Nassau area. It's just outside of Arawa town. That's the area we're having about 8,000 people. Okay, the basic services uh, we have tried to provide to the people. First one is the health service. Uh, we have already provided uh, adequate health services within the area inside Arawa. So far we have about 15 health facilities actually operating within, within central Bougainville, 15. Out of those 15, about six of them are located outside of Arawa in the area we I refer to as Peace Zone area. And uh, these services we have provided are basically, especially to those areas outside of Arawa, is a token of peace to the people of Central Bogan from the national government. We can basically operate anything that uh, we can come across. So we've, we've got uh, facilities for support, supporting facilities such as uh, x-rays, um, pathology, and uh, we also have a dental unit that uh, supplements our uh, facilities here, yeah, uh, apart from the surgical facilities that we actually provide. When we deploy over to, to Arawa, we, the f our primary role is, is for the soldiers, uh, the policemen and the uh, resistant forces that actually support or, or, or uh, actually support the uh, security forces. That's our primary role. We look after them whenever there are skirmishes or, or when anything goes on. We are brought in here. So our primary role is that, but when we actually get here, um, we end up uh, looking after the whole of, of uh, the province. We look after the, the surgical cases, we look after the medical cases, the children that get sick, the mothers that get sick, uh, we look after those. There is no peace in the real sense of the word on Bougainville after eight years, but there are many genuine wishes. Casualties have been many. About 94 deaths have been recorded from the side of the legitimate authority. The BRA's casualties are not known. Much higher, though, are civilian casualties, either directly or indirectly. The economic loss to Papua New Guinea has been phenomenal. Well, and among many who pray peace. for an end to the conflict on Bougainville, well, I pray, I there pray have been two. Archbishop Sir Peter Koronku 
and Bishop Gregory Sinkai, both Bougainvilleans, who died this year. Bishop Sinkai died only recently. They would turn in their graves in praise if Sam Kawona released the captured soldiers and began new peace talks for a Bougainville that is achievable. And for the security forces to do something about their tarnished human rights record.